Hello everyone, I'm Andy Moore, Bus Videos, and welcome to another video in OMZ2, The Bus Simulator. Will you join me at Strathdon Park and Ride with a bus that's blue and not red? Um, I was kind of anticipating using a Southampton City Reds, red streetlight. Um, however, as you can see, this is blue. It doesn't say City Red, it said Solent. So, the interesting story behind the initial repaint is the one that I wanted no longer exists. Unfortunately, um, the person, the creator that made it, also made the lovely street deck repaint, made the streetlight ones a bit ago before the mapping for the repaints on the streetlight were changed. They had a few, as you will all know, from the two, um, for those of you that play it. You know that the streetlights had a few um, mod changes where it changed file source, it changed how the repaints were designed, the um, sort of repaint net was changed, and unfortunately the City Reds repaints livery was one of the liveries that was lost, um, as the person that made it never got a chance to update it, and the download has since been taken down because it's incompatible with the current version. However, with that in mind, and with that said, and I believe the same person might also have made this, um, I thought we'd go for something a bit different that does also sort of theme on the discussion I was going to have. Now, this is SK63KMX that we're going to drive on the 69C service, the um, clockwise um, circular round the Carmelian and nearby estates. And this was one of the vehicles that used to be a Southampton City Red. Now, when they've kept reducing the peak vehicle requirements there, got the deckers in and managed to usher out some other vehicles, um, a number of these streetlights have, have transferred out early. They went about a year or two ago, and this was one of them that used to... It used to run around in red livery. It used to be a Southampton City red bus um, and is now a Solent blue bus. Um, Travelling along the Solents, um, Weymouth, Portsmouth, that kind of region. Um, I'm not particularly... Um, the most um, up to date with um, where the where the regions and the brandings are, but I am in the understanding that this covers Portsmouth, and that's um, the bit that we're focusing on. So I did have the choice as well of driving with an Olympia liveried streetlight with Southampton names in pink, but I thought, well, if you're going to do that, I may as well just drive in a standard Olympia livery. So I kind of didn't see the point of it, if I'm entirely honest. So that's why I thought we're best actually, best actually driving around um, with some sort of nice livery um, instead of just basic Olympia. Because if it was another vehicle, basic Olympia would be okay, but this we want something a little bit more interesting. So I'll let the ticket to log itself in. We're due to leave a minute ago. Sounds good to me. Oh, do you no longer do that? Okay. Um, there we go, pin. I lose track of which one of them does which. But anyway, it is 10.07. Everything on that we need. Daytime running lights. The lot, so let's make a move. Well, it's always nice to have an excuse to drive the street lights. I like driving unusual buses on this on the 69 circular and these vehicles, oh, there's nobody waiting, these vehicles always strike me as, as with the sort of length at 10.8 metres as the perfect vehicle for most routes. I never really seem to have that much of a problem with them. Yeah, it might be a quiet run, I think, because after the last video that we did on Strathshire on the 28th, um, and it was we were stuck in quite a lot of traffic, knowing what this circular can be like, for those of you who watched that video, you know what I'm on about, because I did discuss it, um, I've turned quite a few of the settings down, because otherwise, doing this circular, if you have it on max traffic settings, you'll spend most of your time stuck in traffic, and then also occasionally having to drive through a car to get through a junction. Um, because on some junctions they just do not give way. 
when they should do like um, when when they were doing the highway code they just do not give way because obviously it's AI AI computerized um things so it doesn't have a conscience it doesn't look and go oh gosh yeah I should probably let them out um that that's not a thing in AI AI is like I will do this this is what I'm programmed to do. Just missed the lights. Shocker. So I do like the new blue livery. I mean, blue is the new red um, for first bus because um, the Solent region's not really had a specific brand like Southampton has for so long. So it's quite funny as as soon as South as soon as red's going, blue's in and um, further down the coast. Um, I, I do like the blue livery. I think it's very very pleasant. Um, very pleasant, very basic, but does the job nicely. I think a lot of what First is doing with the corporate liveries at the moment, um, getting rid of the corporate livery and introducing local, localized stuff, um, is really, really nice. Um, it, it's obviously on a, on a, on a localized level, and um, it really, really does the job. It, it gives um, the people who, who sort of live in the towns and cities that First will serve. It gives them a sense that the operation is actually catered for them. It's not just this nationwide thing that they've got to jump on board with and they're not going to get that customer service and all the money that they're making goes to a, a sort of UK-wide profitable thing and all of that lot. It, it gets rid of that kind of perception, even if some of it might be true, but it gets rid of all that kind of perception and makes you think and go, hang on a sec, first person is actually investing in what I want to, in, in where I live and where I travel and... I've got my own buses. It's not a first bus. It's a Solent Blue vehicle. That again, you may have slight issues with Solent Blue line with Go Ahead Group, but that's a discussion for another day. But it's Solent Blue, or it was Southampton Red, or it's it's Sheffield Blue, Doncaster's Red buses. They're not first Doncaster anymore. It's Doncaster's Red buses. It's their Red buses. It's not first buses. It's theirs, and it's that that local. That localization um, is really, really big thing in trying to get people on board buses because it makes them feel like they are actually their buses. It's their buses to travel on. It, it's the service is there for them. They're not having to um, cater for the service. The service is catering for them. The service is there for them to use. And it, it's a lot of an ideological thing, um, very, very much an, an academic ideological argument. I also did forget how good the steering is on this. It's not the kind of bus that you want to drive on a very, very high speed route. Um, it, it's very much not. You don't want to be driving this on the X35 on um, West Country, for example, where you're spending most of your time on the 40, 50 mile an hour roads with this being limited. However, it is the kind of bus that you want to drive around these estates because it's agile. I mean, I'm actually paying attention to the other mirror. It's agile and you, you, you don't have the need to cut as many curves and you're not ending up in buildings. And it's a really nice way to do it. And I mean, that specific example of me just mounting the curb there destroys, destroys the hopes and dreams of me getting around this entire hospital for once without cutting a curb. So I have managed it, I believe, once. But it is very, very rare, very rare, because usually when you take the full longer length vehicles round here, you haven't got an absolute chance of getting round without mounting a single curb, just because of how tight it is. So it will be quite nice in a updated Strathshire um, to rebuild the hospital slightly. Um, because although it is challenging, it's the, the light is not particularly best here at night. So when I want to do an evening, an evening couple of hours driving, I never want, although I love doing the 28, I never want to drive the 28 because when you get to the hospital, it's it's sort of unrealistically dark. Like with a hospital, you'd expect all the massive floodlights and things like that, and it's just nothing. But that that's just personal preference. I mean, there were some people that do like it, but that's just just my personal preference on things. It has been a long time since I've driven down this road. There's nobody waiting here as well. We have a singular passenger. Although it is always quite nice when there's nobody waiting at this one. 
because having to try and line up to pick to pick them up is so annoying. I do love myself a reversing camera, they are rare, but I do love them. There we go. Let's just there we go. Straight in. <laughs> it's always quite nice again when you when you get to a junction like that and it's all clear. Very very rare. You know, I used to get the traffic and the people set it absolutely spot on. And recently, I've just been it's been so out. It's either been too much or too little. I mean, with this, in fairness, running a trip. Uh, at this time, um, at five past ten, um, in real life, would probably be quite quiet anyway because all of the um, concessionary passes will have got on the 9.35 trip half an hour ago. So this trip itself will be quite quiet. Um, they'll have got on that on, yeah, they'll have got on that one. So this one would, in real life, be quite quiet anyway in a route like this. I'm driving so badly that passengers want to leave. Oh dear. <laughs> I do also put that down to the street like jolt, jolting forward because I just kind of get used to it. But I've noticed that even though it's like a thing that does happen in, in real life, um, the AI passengers obviously do not like it at all. The so revenue of the bus is quite a smooth stop. With these, there's a lot of jolting involved, even, even sort of when you go on one um, in the real world. So, but for some reason, obviously, the AI passengers don't like that, but that's because it, it's the inbuilt program um, was for smoother vehicles and things like that. So, yeah, lovely and clear today is this road. Definitely not as busy as it was. That was a fair bit tighter than I was expecting. Well, the one thing I have kept tuned up is the parked cars because I do like a, a good parked car challenge. Sainsbury's. It might pick up in fairness as we go back to the park and ride because again you won't rarely get people travelling from a park and ride to their home at five past ten. Um, in fairness, you, you won't get that many people. I mean, I was expecting the other one from the hospital, but again, it's is what it is. Oh, that is a person waiting. <laughs> I genuinely, they blended in because they've read, they blended in with the spa. I kind of just switched off. <laughs> Oops. Oopsie daisy. I mean, I gen genuinely did not. I looked at the bus stop, glanced at it, saw, oh, there's no one there, and then it, it, start, it started walking. Oh dear. Oh dear me, these things happen. At least I managed to stop in time. At least there was nobody else on board because they'd have definitely got off with the jolting that this bus did to stop.
So I do imagine that quite a lot of the other Southampton um, red street lights of the same specification as this will most likely end up um, at Solent as well. I can't see a lot of the vehicles from the Southampton operation going any further, any further afield. Um, I would expect quite a lot of them to stay local. And the reason for that is the vehicle age. If they were quite old vehicles, a few of them would get withdrawn and scrapped and that lot. But because the vehicle demographic is very new, they're very new buses compared to um, the, the rest of the surrounding areas, I can imagine a lot of the vehicles staying local to replace some of the older vehicle, old buses they're still running. I mean, Portsmouth itself um, and, and Weymouth have got a relatively updated fleet now. They're not running really that many older older eclipses and things like that. So I could imagine a couple ending over over the over the county in Somerset um, and helping the buses or what was the buses in Somerset operation. Um, I could imagine that happening. And um, definitely, in fairness, because I don't I believe they're still running some B7 eclipses, some older ones. Definitely got some B7 Gemini's left. Um, so the streetlights could help to um, assist in replacing some of them. Um, I imagine the street decks will stay local because they'll try and get rid of the, the B9s that they've got remaining um, at Solent and if they've got any. I believe they have, they have a couple a couple left but they'll end up in Cornwall. So it's going to be interesting when I do my annual trip to Cornwall this year. Um, it has now, it's now turned into an annual um, after the um, trip last year, last Easter that I did. Um, for those of you that watched on the main channel you'll notice I attended um, the Penzance Heritage Running Day. So it's going to be quite interesting um, sort of travelling down again and seeing the changes that have taken place in a year. Because within a year, the older open top buses have gone and then I, was, I managed to sample quite a few of them. Um, the Some of the old B7s have gone, been replaced by um, B9s. The Tridents have gone. That is such a shame. I mean, 32762 is hanging on. That is the last one. It's clinging on at the moment um, as the last example. Um, it was withdrawn and it's now in the reserve fleet because they are short buses. So they've got that still clinging on. I mean, they've still got the Scania Solars. I wanted to go on them last time and never got a chance. So I'm hoping to try and get a Scania Solar in this time. See how it goes like, but um, op optimism, optimism. So I'm hoping to get a get a solar in this time round, because um, the solars are the X um, Berkshire X74 ones, and um, that used to do red into red into Slough, or red into Bracken. You know, I know it was Slough. I'm sure it was. Um, the X the um, X74 used to do that when it was first. Um, again, another operation closed. So yeah, when it was them, it was um, it was those solars on them. The solars ended up being branded up for park and ride service. So I never see them do. So I'm hoping to see the odd one on the T1 this time round. That would be quite nice because they do they do the T1s quite regularly. Um, so I am hoping that one. Um, and up on the T1 again just so I can go go for a trip on it from Trero to Camborne quite nice but we'll see how it goes but yeah it's definitely the rise of the B9 there um, at the moment um, in Cornwall I know when I went last time there wasn't a single B9 TL in use um, not a single one um, and now they've got them all on the Lanzen coasters as open top ones, they've got a number of B9s covering on services like the U4, so they're based at Helston, that's the one, they're based at Helston House Station, they've got a couple based at Truro, um, or Camborne, should I say, not Truro, they do the Truro Colleges um, and service work, but they're based at based at Camborne, um, so they are very much, very much expanding at the moment, um, and those vehicles. That vehicle type is, is very, very much growing. So it'd be quite nice to obviously see how they cope on some of the Cornish routes. I mean, I don't mind the odd B9, um, in my opinion. The B9s and the original B7 hour, the Eclipse Falls and Five, like Euro Falls and Fives, um, were kind of the last properly, like, 
um, non non plasticky vehicles um, before we ended up with street lights and street decks. Um, so I don't really mind them. I mean, I can only imagine what a couple of the Bradford 694s would be like, 693s and 4s would be like um, on the Cornish routes, but they'd be absolute rockets. Um, but that's just that's just dream fault. Although, in fairness, I do say that, and some of the um, ones that were new to Bradford have operated in Cornwall. Um, the 692, 692, 50 to 50 to, no, it was, six, uh, it was 692, 49 up to 692, 52, I believe, have operated there. And 692, 45 to 48, where it's Southampton there, now it's Sheffield, but 49 to 52, you'll remember from another video that I've done, because 49 to 52, um, we knew to Bradford, ended up down in Cornwall, ended up over in Wales with Swansea, and then ended up in Leicester and operating on the 88 and 88A service. Now, because of all seven plates and what they've done, no, somebody else wants to get off, goodness me. Um, because they're all seven plates, um, they've now gone from Leicester and have been converted into driver trainers. So I managed to go on all bar one of them. Um, so I did quite well. I'll see if they want to jump off here. There you go. Fast. It's important to note as well, the legals that are based at Southampton. Again, very important to consider that although Southampton City Reds are stopping running and they won't be running any physical local bus services in the in Southampton City, the Empress Road Depot is going to remain open. And it's going to be remain open for the foreseeable and um, for the office side of things. Um, so the Southampton Depot Empress Road um, is pretty much the base of First Bus South, or what it used to be, First Bus First First Bus UK South, I believe it is. Um, and they're pretty much the base for that at Southampton. So I imagine Southampton will stay open in the office capacity for that. So all office workers' jobs are secured for now. Um, and that will remain in that capacity. They just won't run any routes. And I imagine they might start to use the yard um, for vehicle storage. Um, potentially for the new sales side of the business that's going to be starting up properly. Well, that has been running in the north for some time now, um, but the sales business that's probably going to be starting up at Perfleet and wants to take over Ensign Bus. There we go, and because I don't believe we have anybody left on, um, we'll just go straight onto straight onto the infamous back wall. Oh, they've come up with the timetable as I'm trying to manoeuvre it in, trying to tuck it in, so I'm not going to cause a problem. So there we go, so that was the 69C circular. Um, I hope you enjoyed the discussion as well. I mean, the discussion has per usual took us all over the place. Um, I, do love, I do love recording these because I can just have that that discussion with you all. It's not something we can do in the Animal Central channel as the videos are, are fixed on a, sp a particular subject. Um, the, I mean, I, I do love recording these in particular subjects and hopefully you all enjoy watching them. If you want to have any, do go and, and subscribe to the Animal Central channel just so you don't miss any of the exciting videos I've got coming up. I've got quite a lot of exciting stuff I'm editing up at the moment. Um, so do go and check those out. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really, really um, nice to record these, have a little drive around, have a little jolly and just see where the discussion takes us. For now though, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. If you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the And More Bus Videos YouTube channel for more content like this from the simulation section as well as the real life bus industry conversation, as well as nearly 5,000, an archive of nearly 5,000 backseat and engine focused public transport videos from the UK and beyond. And one of the biggest archives for buses, trams, trains, um, boats and absolutely all sorts 
um, recorded on this channel. It's one of the biggest archives on the YouTube for it. Once again, though, I would like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this one, and I will see you all in the next video, mate. Goodbye for now. Bye.